Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, all of our staff, and all of the people who are helping to lead worship today, we are so glad that you are here. We are honored to be able to lead you in this time of worship on this beautiful day that God has given us. We're continuing today in our series, focusing in on the Ten Commandments as they call us to greater worship, greater simplicity, and greater generosity. It's entitled 10, Sovereignty, Sabbath, and Service. So I'm particularly glad that you are here to continue in this exploration with us. If this is your first time with us in online worship, if it's your millionth time with us in online worship, please make sure that you fill out the contact form. It is pinned right in the comment section. There's a place there for you to give your contact information. There's a place there for you to give your prayer requests that you'd like to go to the pastors and to our prayer team. And this is the best way that we'll be able to connect with you as you are growing in your love of Jesus and your walk of faith, as you're looking to connect in all of the ways that we are in ministry and service as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. So please make sure to fill out that contact form today. When we gather for online worship, we do covenant together to be a blessing and to fully participate. Now that covenant to participation is that, well, we're going to do the things that we're doing in worship today. So we encourage you to go ahead and close down other devices, put away other distractions, maybe light a candle to help you focus, and then go ahead and fully participate. When we're praying, pray. When we're singing, sing. When we're listening for God's word to us, listen, and we'll all participate fully in that way. And then we covenant to be a blessing to one another and to the community at large and everyone who's participating. And so that means that we are a blessing in the way we uh, have conversation with one another in the comment section, the way we interact with the people in our households and with our community at large so that everything we do during this online worship is a blessing. Now, one of our favorite things, of course, to do when we gather as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is to share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with one another. You can do that with me, do that with the people in your household that you're gathered with, with the people online in the comment section. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. And we're also going to be led in that by some very special people of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Tracy Sisk, and I am here with the Women of Power Bible Study Evening Group. Um, I am a member of the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Um, I also sing in the choir, and I'm a member of Lydia Circle. Peace be with you. And also with you, I'm Linda Herod. I serve on the Wouldn't It Be Lovely board, and I also serve at Island Grove United Methodist Church. Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Megan Moore, and I'm a member of the Island Grove United Methodist Church in New Berlin and a member of this Bible study group. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Sue Landgreeb. I'm a member at Douglas Avenue. I am also a member of the Lydia Circle, and I'd like to say peace be with you. And also with you. I am Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the Associate Pastor here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Susan Spaulding. I'm a member of the Island Grove Methodist Church in New Berlin. Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Michelle Miller. I've been attending Douglas Avenue for about a year now. Um, lifelong Methodist and a member of this Bible study, and I just want to say peace be with everyone.
I'm Maria. I am a part of the DAMT youth group. And I'm Angie, Maria's mom, and I'm a part of Douglas as well. Welcome, Welcome to, to worship, worship, everyone. God is calling us today. God, God help us to hear your call in our lives. God needs our gifts and graces to help others. God help us to use the blessings you give us to benefit others. Let us worship and celebrate God's love and blessings. God help us to show our faithfulness in our words and actions. Amen. Good morning. Please join us as we sing Love the Lord. Hello, it is time for Small Talk. I want to invite all of the children who are participating in worship with us today to get in really close to your devices and screens so that you can see and hear everything that's going on with Small Talk. Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, who is our Director of Children and Youth Ministries. And of course, she is joined by her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So make sure you get in really close so that you can see and hear everything with Small Talk. Okay, good morning. It is Miss Lori and Laud and Laud's assistant Cohen. And it is a beautiful Sunday morning and we, we wanna talk today about loving ourselves and loving our neighbors. What does that mean? We'll get to that in a minute. He's excited, we have marshmallows and ice, yeah. Loving ourselves, loving our neighbors, like we love ourselves. That's kind of a difficult thing to think about. Does that mean that I need to just care for my neighbors that live right next to me? What do you think, Laud? Is that, is that what that means? No. Well, we're gonna do a little experiment here. Marshmallows, and Laud likes marshmallows. You can do this experiment at home you just need something sweet. So we're gonna use a marshmallow. Okay, Lod, ready? Mm, 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 yes. Yes, he could put it, put it in his mouth, it's gone. Now he's gonna get an ice cube. You ready, Lod? It's cold. 
Oh yeah, that was really cold. He wasn't quite sure about that. Now, very quickly after the ice cube, kind of numbed his mouth a little bit. We're gonna give him another marshmallow. Did that taste as good, Lod? No, no, it didn't taste quite as good. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, yeah. It's kind of like our heart. We're very sweet and loving to our neighbors, but then sometimes our heart gets kind of cold and we stop thinking about everybody around us. And sometimes we just think about ourselves. And when you just think about yourself, things aren't, don't taste as sweet. They don't taste as sweet. Our heart's kind of numb. But when we care for others around us, not just our neighbors that live right next door, people that need us, it warms us back up again. So that's what, when we talk about loving ourselves and loving our neighbors, means help. Help people that need help. Just like you would yourself. My shirt today, it's the new Wouldn't It Be Lovely shirt. It says, be kind. So that's your goal this week. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to those around you. Look for who maybe needs help. Can you do that, Wad? Maybe we should check on Donkey this week. What do you think? Mm -hmm. He might need some help. All right. We love you guys. We miss you. We will see you soon. Bye. Hello, I'm Max Brinkley from Douglas Avenue and United Methodist Church, and I'm here to give a scripture reading. Our first sharing of the Bible is from the fifth chapter of Deuteronomy, the Ten Commandments. I'll share with you a summary statement of these Ten Commandments. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Moses called out to all Israel, saying to them, Israel, listen to the regulations in the case laws that I'm recounting in your hearing right now. Learn them and carefully do them. The Lord said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You must have no other gods before me. Do not worship any god except me. Don't bow down and worship idols. Do not misuse my name. Remember that the Sabbath day belongs to me. Respect your father and your mother. Do not murder. Be faithful in marriage. Do not steal, do not tell lies about others, and do not want anything that belongs to someone else. Good morning, Douglas Avenue. Kevin here, your fellow traveler with DAUMC. It's been a minute. I miss you guys a ton. I'm always thinking about you. You're always on my heart, always in my prayers. A uh, special shout out to our Wibble girls who I think are kind of leading the way in terms of overcoming and perseverance, which is what we need more than ever right now. Miss you guys. I love you very much. Don't you forget it. With that said, let's open our Bibles for our reading today. Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the scribes came near and heard religious leaders disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. God bless you, Douglas Avenue. Amen and amen. 
It has been a real honor and pleasure to hear from so many people in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family as to why they love and support Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And today we are going to receive a wonderful testimony from Martha Clark. I'm Martha Clark. Good morning. And I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church since 1982. So I've been here about 40 years, which seems like an incredibly long time. Um, I came here after a period of not really being churched for about 10 years. And um, I had a, one of those things happen in your life that you never expect. And uh, uh, the minister who was coming here said the funeral for my son. And so I said, well, I think I'll go back. And I came here. And, I feel that this church is my family. Uh, it's God's family, but it has become my family. Uh, I've grown, I've aged here, I've matured, uh, matured in, uh, in age and in learning, uh, in praising God and doing all the things that we do so well. Um, and I referred today to Romans 12, which we used in a different class of mine uh, with regard to transforming and renewing our minds recently, but it also talks about the church is composed of people who have many different gifts, and I learned to use my gifts here and, and continue to do that. Um, I feel that the church also knows how to go about the job of loving other people, which we're encouraged to do and to make disciples, and this church does that very well. Hi, I'm Barbara Webster. I sing in the chancel choir and I also play in the handball choir. Please join us in Thy Word is a Lamp. worship these last several weeks, our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family has been diving into the Ten Commandments as a part of our worship, prayer, commitment, and celebrating season called Ten, Sovereignty, Sabbath, and Service. In our first reading from the Bible, Max summed up for us the Ten Commandments to help us remember them. We've explored how the Ten Commandments teach us that God is sovereign God is God of everyone and everything, of all creation. The commands of sovereignty teach us that our orientation for life in this world is to God. That God is God of all that we are and all that we have and all we do. Our work, our money, our vote, our school, our speech, our families, our play, all of it. 
Our challenge of 10 spiritual practice to encourage us in this area is to pray about the tithe, giving 10% of our income or increasing our giving by 10% as a way to work toward the tithe as we reflect on God's sovereignty. We explored the command to Sabbath, the fourth in the list of the 10, and confessed that this is particularly difficult for us in our 24-7 working, producing, using, and dehumanizing world, which makes Sabbath perhaps the most subversive and transforming of all of the commandments. Because the command to Sabbath sets aside time for remembering and honoring our sovereign God with worship. Sabbath is rest for everyone, for everyone and all of the creation. Sabbath resists the violence we deal in our lives and with our lifestyle and counters with rest, rejuvenation, reorientation, and reconnection. As you recall, our challenge of 10 spiritual practice to encourage Sabbath is to use 10% less. And then we explored the last six commands and their call to service. These commands teach us fundamentally how we are to relate to one another. Jesus calls us to live fully into these commands, not by the letter of the law, but fully into the principle and the spirit of them. To let love and service live as the principle within us and guide and steer all of our actions. Our challenge of 10 spiritual practice to go with these is turn our using 10% less on ourselves into giving 10% more for others to increase our time in service to God by 10%. Last week, our wonderful guest preacher, Reverend Keith Zimmerman, helped us imagine what it looks like to express the 10 commandments in our lives with a powerful and encouraging message of joyful generosity as expressed through the greatest commandment that Jesus gives us and give an example through the early Christian church in Macedonia. As the Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, during the Macedonians' severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity. The Apostle Paul and Reverend Zimmerman remind us that the grace of God and the Holy Spirit are also at work in us, transforming whatever it is we have into joyful, generous giving. Today, we've heard Kevin recount for us again Jesus' teaching about the commandments, summed up in what is called the Great Commandment. Jesus teaches us that we shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, and that we shall love our neighbor as ourself. Then Jesus proclaims, there is no other commandment greater than these. These two commandments put together make the great commandment. Jesus presents them as intertwined, supportive, and co-creative, one with the other. That their sum is greater than their individual parts. To truly love God with all that we are is to love our neighbor. And to truly love our neighbor is to love God with all that we are. Together, these two create more. The commandment of love. The commandment of love that births the kingdom of God. Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church seeks to live and co-create with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, our church family, the community, and the world a full expression of this great commandment, the commandment of love. Working in, resting in, working out, and living out this commandment of love is core to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Our church is here to assist the Holy Spirit's work of transforming people through the commandment of love into people who are disciples of Jesus, formed and shaped in the likeness of Christ. Because you see, at DAUMC, we don't just recruit people who love God or who are seeking to love God. 
We also don't just recruit people who love their neighbor or who want to serve their neighbor. We're working to put these together to realize the power of God's love in Jesus Christ for the transformation of lives and the world to the kingdom of God. And Lordy, are we working on it together as a church family in all of its messiness, in its joy and fruitfulness, with our failures at it, with our strength and spiritual practices and all of our weaknesses. We believe that this is our primary work. Why? Because people who live out this commandment of love, people who love and follow Jesus, they multiply people who love and follow Jesus. And those transformed people with transformed values change the world to the kingdom of God as Jesus outlines it for us as Jesus outlines it for us, not as power-hungry leaders define it, not as a tepid theology focused on asking individuals, are you saved, that deflects away from the hard work of love. Instead, we're working toward transformed people and values as Jesus teaches, as Jesus creates, as Jesus loves, with love, first, last, and always love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. There is no doubt in my mind that Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is a community of faith where love is lived and where we continue to work this out each and every day. We see this in the countless volunteer hours of the people of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church within the church community and out in the greater community. From food banks and pantries to mentoring children to gardening, music and the arts, working for a healthy environment, supporting people experiencing homelessness, serving on boards and committees, hashing through policies and procedures, and walking with people in recovery, because that is the commandment of love. We see this in the generous financial giving of the people of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to financially support the entirety of our ministries, the ministries of other churches and our local schools, to giving financial resources to the work of a multitude of community, social, faith-building, service, medical, housing, justice-creating, and educational organizations and agencies at home and around the world because that is the commandment of love. We see it through the people of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in the day in and day out giving and working through their places of employment, through their school, through their homes, through their volunteer groups, through their social networks and circle of friends, circles of family, neighbors, and with people they don't even know because that is the commandment of love. We see it in how this church has birthed, housed, and given flight to organizations that have this transforming love at their heart, such as Wouldn't It Be Lovely and Compass for Kids, loving and transforming the lives of women, children, and families throughout our city because that is the commandment of love. We see it in the numerous worship opportunities, small groups and Sunday school classes, United Methodist women, children, youth, and family faith formation, communications, committees and work groups, and prayer groups and musical groups, all who made the courageous leap at Douglas Avenue to connect online so that they could continue to connect and grow in the transforming ministry of loving and following Jesus, connecting with as many people as possible, as safely as possible, because that is the commandment of love. I know that we're not the only place where people can learn to live out love, but Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is one of the very best. Developing tenacious, 
resilient, joy-filled people who love and follow Jesus every day in their living, working, giving, and service, formed and shaped by the powerful, loving, transforming, connecting community workhorse that is Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. This is why we are here. This is why it is so needed for us to continue to connect with one another and our community with safety and health at heart. This is why we continue to expect the Holy Spirit to reveal new mediums and new ways and new ministries that we haven't even thought of yet. This is why it is so important to support your church with your prayers, with your safely connected presence, with your gifts, with your service, and with your witness. And I pray that as you prayerfully make your commitment to financial giving into Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for 2021, that this life-changing, world-changing commandment of love that we earnestly strive to live out every day in our church, that this commandment of love will guide and lead you to give and connect and serve and most of all, love. Amen. Please join us in Take My Life and Let It Be. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup and I'm the Associate Pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is now the time in our worship service where we try to take a deep breath and clear our minds and we go to God in prayer. So I invite you to bow your heads and pray with me. O oh, gracious and loving God, we come to you knowing the importance of expressing our gratitude to you. Our gratitude for the beautiful creation that you have given us, for the love that we see in people. We are so grateful, oh God. We're grateful for life and we're grateful in all of the places that we see new life. But as we also give you our gratitude, oh God, we ask that you be with us, that we are often growing weary, 
This has been a very difficult season for many of us. We ask that you continue to be with us as we go through these months of the coronavirus. As our numbers in our community continue to rise, oh God, we ask that you stay with us and keep us strong, that we continue to protect those around us and ourselves. We ask that you be with those, God, that need you most, those that are sick with the virus, those in the hospital and in nursing homes. We ask that you bring each of those, somebody with them that gives them comfort and peace, the right medications that are needed. We pray, oh God, for the healthcare workers that you continue to strengthen them, to give them the power in each day that they feel your presence with them as they do their work. Oh God, we hear great things coming on the horizon with the vaccine and we are grateful for that, God. We ask that you continue to be with the scientists and the research that someday this virus will be behind us. But in the meantime, oh God, we ask that you be with all of us in our own personal journey. Help us to see the good things that this virus may bring to some, the importance of family as we reprioritize what is important in each of our lives. Oh God, we also ask that you be with those in our congregation that have experienced loss of any kind from the virus, loss of plans, loss of routine, loss of people that they love. Be with those that are grieving, those that are sick or lost, those that are addicted or homeless. We continue to be grateful for the wonderful ministries of this church and all the support that we receive each and every day to continue to do your ministry in this world. It is a very important day, O oh God, as our church continues to be on our path for our fundraising, our campaign, our consecration, as we all continue to examine our own hearts, our wallets, our capabilities to give either financially or in person. God, we ask that you draw near to each of us, open our hearts and see how we can give 10% of every part of us be with us, O oh God. We come to you now in a time of silence and we each bring to you all of these concerns that many of us have. Be with us now as we pray. And together we will pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Each and every week we share how important generosity is to loving and following Jesus in real ways in our community and world. And I want to thank you again for the ways you so generously give your finances into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I want to encourage you to that giving. You can use our online giving portal. The link to that is right in the comment section. You can uh, talk to the church office about setting up any number of different kinds of automatic withdrawals you can mail your check into the church office. Thank you for that generous giving. And I want you to encourage you to prayerfully consider and complete your 2021 estimate of giving card for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to help us to continue to grow into these incredible ministries of life transformation and service in our world. You can bring those by the church on Sunday from 1 to 3 p.m. Receive a wonderful sweet thank you gift as you drop those off. You can mail those into the church office. You can use our online estimate of giving card. We'll have that pinned in the comment section as well. And we want to share with you one of those sweet thank you gifts as well. So please connect with us so that we can um, receive your generous commitments and we can give you this sweet thank you gift in return as well. Uh, it's been such a joy to hear during these times of offering in generosity about our missions at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And we have a wonderful presentation today about an opportunity for a blood drive here at Douglas Avenue that's brought to us by Cindy Haymor. Good morning. My name is Cindy and I am a member of the mission committee at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We are sponsoring a blood drive 
for the Central Illinois Blood Bank and are asking for donors. The blood drive will be held Saturday, November 28th from 1130 until 3. The blood mobile will be located here at the church in the back parking lot. The blood mobile provides a safe environment by strictly following the CDC guidelines for all donors and staff. And they make it so easy to donate. And when you donate, you will receive a great long sleeve t-shirt and a gift card as a thank you gift. You will need to sign up to participate. Sign up directly at the website provided by the Central Illinois Food Bank using the link provided in the comments section. The link is also available at DAUMC e-newsletter or you can contact the church with any questions or help signing up. Donating blood is a great way to start the Advent season and give an early Christmas present to someone who would need it. Thank you for donating and please hold the mission project in your prayers. Please stand and join us in Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Thank you so much for worshiping with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. I just pray that this connection and this worship, this singing, this prayer, all of this has been a blessing to you and that it will inspire you to be a blessing as you continue on into your day and into your life. We love you. We want to connect with you. Remember to use that contact form so that we can do that. And remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. As you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you completely, that Jesus Christ calls you forward in that life of love, and that the Holy Spirit will hold you up and guide you and strengthen you as you live the commandment of love each and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. <laughs>